Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I get to work on a classic, and it's a beautiful reel that Scott found at a West Coast flea market. The reel hardly looks used, and it actually came with a second spool. There's some indication here that maybe that was a price tag or something. There's a little circular badge that may be missing. But this is the Luxor Salmon Reel. And uh, while it's a big one, it was made in France. And uh, well, we're going to show you what made it uh, as popular as it was. And well, we'll see what we can do to uh, keep this one fishing or um, at least operating beautifully as a display piece. I'm going to start by taking off the exterior pieces. I'm going to start with the spool because I'm a little bit curious what is under there. And uh, well, it's got the, the axle shaft and it's got three screws holding on the rotor uh, below. We're going to set that aside for a moment. We'll come over here and remove the handle. As I do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of reel service and repair. If you like learning about older reels or the new reels, I would. you're basically looking at uh, what comes into my shop. And uh, well, sometimes it's very old and sometimes it's very new. I'm going to remove the collar here behind the, the handle as well. Not sure if that's necessary or not, but you know what? I'll take it off. There's three screws that are attaching the side plate to the reel. You want to be very careful with these, particularly when you get a reel like this that doesn't look like it's been fished very much. Just be careful. You don't want to scrape paint and the like. Now, there is evidence of wear on this reel. You can see it here underneath. I don't know if that was electrical tape or what it was. Uh, but there's some evidence, as I mentioned, the missing sticker, or poss possibly a sale price sticker, I'm not sure. Whatever it is or was, that's okay. Just uh, take your time, be patient, and let's see what, the, what happens as a result of it. So we have one big main gear here that should just walk out. And I want to just move that off to the side now, so that I leave the anti-reverse intact. And we've got a lot of old dried grease here. That's not uncommon. And we want to take a moment to brush off here and see how this crosswind block is attached. It's attached with a little nut below. So I'm probably going to have to go get a, a, a um, ratchet wrench that has that little nuts with capacity in order to do that. So we'll shut the, the video off for a moment. We'll go get that, uh, that wrench and we'll be back. Well, every now and then I've got to go to micro tools. And every now and then I get asked, what kind of tools should you have when servicing a reel? And I, I wouldn't recommend running out and getting these, but this is a small set of Craftsman micro tools. This one is actually in um, US threads, but it's the quarter inch and it seems to work. So we're going to remove this by turning traditionally in a counterclockwise method. And then you want to remove that as best you can. When you get the pieces and parts out, do what I do find a, an organization scheme for you. In this case, I use a, a parts tray. And that parts tray. Well, it just kind of is a good place to go to look to find those pieces. All right, I think there's probably a washer here as well. There is. Yeah. Let's see if I can just pull up on this and out. It should release the, the mechanism now. There's actually two washers on here. First one is in the case. Just be aware when you take these off where they go. And then as I do, they'll go into the parts tray next. Now let's see if that releases now. That will release the, it should release this whole piece. There we go. That takes this off. And you can see the old greases and, and the like and the debris on this. And then we should be able to pull up and out on our axle shaft. I'm going to set this aside for a moment. I'm going to just mop this up. So let's get the tools out of the way. 
something underfoot so we don't uh, transfer all of this junk over to our clean work area. I'm just looking for a flat plated screwdriver now to go and you know, break off the old greases and, and dirt and the like. So this reel was turning nice and easy, kind of credit given all of the uh, dirt and debris on these pieces. These reels were built to last. So they could, even though they were pretty tight tolerances, they could certainly put up with a lot. And a lot usually means that the lack of maintenance. So these types of reels were made in France. France got the jump on spinning reels versus the U.S. The U.S. really didn't adopt spinning reels until after the GIs came back from World War II. And while well, they came back from World War II because of seeing the, the spinning reel combinations over in France, they were kind of demanding them here. And the first ones were imported that's why you see a reel like this from France. And then later on, the US manufacturers started making them. Some of them were companies like Langley, who, uh, well, they were making aluminum parts for aircraft during the war and switched over to making fishing reels after the war. Some of the ones that you are more familiar with, like uh, Penn and that, really didn't start until early 1960s in terms of making the, those reels. All right, well, we cleaned up the back end. This front end is just as much a, a grease pit. Let's get all that old grease and the like out of here. Again, we'll use a little bit of penetrating oil to soften that grease. And we'll use a cotton swab to kind of push it around. Pick it up. And then we can wipe that down, get rid of that towel. And I got one more, I just like the, the brush here. I'm going to use a hard brush to pull through the teeth of the main gear. Beautiful gearing, that's for sure. And it's got a good, um, good ratio here. So it's not high speed, but it's higher speed because of that big gear that uh, can drive this. Okay, kind of curious to see what this next piece is here. We have a little piece that appears to be part of the, the inner workings of the reel. Again, lots of old grease clogging it up here. Then we can come up top. We'll just a little bit more cleaning in a moment, but there's three screws that are holding on the rotor here. We're going to go take those off next. When you do this, match the, the slot size with the screwdriver. From time to time I'm asked what this screwdriver is. It's actually an electrician screwdriver, and it, uh, I believe it's 7 30 seconds is the blade. It's just under a quarter of an inch blade. Seems to fit a lot of screws in that on the fishing reels. Okay, those three screws are out. They're going to be put into the parts tray. Now I should be able to release the hole here. Two more screws. And we should be able to release that pinion gear. And this is quite the, uh, the pinion gear here. And I'm thinking... Oh, we have the roller bearing. I'm not seeing a way to detach that at the moment. I don't know if that's pressed on.
And we're going to just leave that shaft be. Clean it up. We'll re-grease. This one's greased. It's open bearings. to our case. Now's a good time to try and get the rest of this done. You can see that we have a lot of dirt inside. And this answers the question, can that part be removed? It can't. It's kind of welded onto the back there. And we'll do the same thing we did with the other. We're going to just kind of flood that area with the penetrating oil. And we'll do the cleanup. So there was a lot of grease in here. That would be a good indication as to why it was performing nicely. Even though it was older and drier, it wasn't dried out. We've done certainly done a lot of reels here where the dried grease inhibited production. Well, in this case, it hadn't dried out, so we're in good condition. All right, that case is just about as clean as it's going to get. Just a little bit of last minute here. It doesn't make sense to, to not do the cleaning when you're doing the reels. I know there's people out there, because I get the reel some time to time. The customer will bring in a reel because it has a problem. They'll fix the problem, but they won't clean the reel. That just bothers me. Especially at the prices that they get. All right. I think we did good here. Very good. All right. Well, we've got a nice clean inner case now. Let's go back and finish this then. I'm going to re-grease this. I don't normally grease bearings, but this is the old style bearing. And uh, you can pack it with grease. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the flat blade of a screwdriver and my fishing wheel grease to load that up. Just like that. It's almost like you're packing a wheel bearing of an older car. I'm going to use my grease to get onto the pinion side of the gear. And to the extent that I can get up top. Let's take that whole assembly. We want to get a little bit of grease onto the shaft here. Let's go reinstall that. Center that into the carrier. Push in. And then we have our two screws that are tie-down screws. That's holding that assembly in place. Here's a screw starter here. Every time I use this, I think of Dick, who heads up a, a, a chapter of Salt Strong, who sent me this. So I know you have trouble with those smaller pieces and parts. He's a screw starter, and I'm eternally thankful to him for that. Now I'm going to just tighten it down, make sure we've held that in. Make sure that we're nice and tight underneath here, make sure this is clean. And go ahead and use this. You're going to have to line your holes up. I like to use a pick to do that. We'll come over here to get the three screws. I probably should have started that before I did the lining up. Well, if you have any questions on this wheel, and I've presented a lot of information as we've been kind of working on this, but if you have a question with this reel or any reel of its time, let's leave that question in the uh, comment section. I will try to answer that for you. Hopefully we'll both learn from it. We have a lot of smart people in the channel forum that can certainly add additional information. I know there's several folks that have this old reel type thing going. 
and uh, I don't know the answer. I know they will certainly help out and provide that information. Just leave that question in the comment section. All right, here's the third one of this going in now. Just want to do that last piece of tightening with the screwdriver here. And now we're basically going in reverse of the way that we took it apart. Check your axle shaft, make sure it's nice and smooth and clean. It is. Light coat of grease there. Don't put too much in, it's only going to get pushed out when it goes through that um, carrier. Bring that down on this side. Next up will be the cross line block. A little bit of grease. This one was certainly chock full of grease. And it's going to sit, and this is where your pictures would have helped if you didn't remember how it sits. It sits like this. That screw comes through. I'm going to let it kind of lay to the bottom. It's kind of interesting on the way back in because gravity is working against you there. And we have the two washers that go over. First one is a kind of a flat washer. The second one's a tension washer. I'm going to bring them in so that I can start that. This might be the hardest part of the whole reassembly is getting this nut started. Okay, here's how I found out how to do it. Set that in. Make sure that you're tight to the posts. Hold the nut. <laughs> and just turn the axle shaft to tighten the nut. That works out a lot easier. Because a lot of times I would just wish that I was on a factory floor back in the day when these reels were being made to observe it firsthand. It would certainly make it a lot easier to understand how they did it. But I think I just figured out how they did it there. I'm just finishing up the tightening with the, the wrench. I think I got it. Well, problem is you're only doing a quarter of a turn here. And you do want to be tight. You don't want it to shake off. Okay, there we go. Now make sure that it glides up and down nice and easy. Use your grease on that back side, the rungs that it's going to ride on. And then we're back up to a little bit of cleanup on the anti-reverse. That grease was shared across the, the reel. Let's clean that up. And when you go to reinstall, you want this anti-reverse off. Because if you try to put it in like this, it has to mesh with the teeth in the back. And, uh, well, it doesn't always go well. This is a picture for those of you that for somehow may have taken the, the piece off when cleaning. That's how it looks when it's assembled. On the main gear then, we just want to put a little bit of grease onto the main sh gear shaft. And of course we want to put grease onto the teeth of the main gear. And we want to get grease inside. Now you saw us scraping off the grease. That's because that uh, crosswind block is going to ride on the inside. So you want to make sure that it has a nice slippery surface there. And if you weren't paying attention, you find a small copper ring or a brass ring. It goes on the stud here. That's where that belongs. Well, we can do this two ways. One of the ways is simply to merge it all right like that. Then bring your case over. Put that on. Line up your screws and reset the case. Now, this is a good place where you should have taken pictures as well because the screw holes will line up any of a number of ways. Well, it looks like my battery just ran out, so I 
take my glove, change the battery. And as I was saying, this is where you want to start. You want to take your pictures because, well, these screws are equidistant. And if you're not paying attention, you may put this in a position where you can't access it when it's time to uh, put the, the clutch back on or uh, take it off. That's your anti-reverse mechanism. All right, two more. We'll see how we did. So we've learned a lot here. Believe it or not, if you open up a lot of the modern reels today, you're going to find a very similar design. Maybe the bearings are going to be sealed, but you'll see that there's a rotor up top with a uh, Use your opinion gear, and the big gear is going to drive the little gear and make the world go round. All right. Next up then was this collar. It goes on in a reverse thread. We have a washer. And we have our handle. And the handle is a reversible handle, so you can take it out of play if you're Storing the wheel, you just it's been removed or loosened, but it will come out and flip around just like the old Mitchell's would. All right, let's see what's underneath here. We have a wire ring that's holding the drag system in place. I'm thinking we may have pure metal drags in here. It's been a while since I've worked on one of these, and uh, Scott gave me uh, actually a spare spool, so we're gonna. A look at the spare spool too. He, he was able to get that as part of the purchase. And, uh, we have a drag washer underneath here. Let's see what we have up top. And we have the one washer. That's it. So we have one washer. In this case it's not doing very well because it's stuck to the metal. So you want to use something very easily just get that off. This could be a leather washer, which was totally appropriate for the period. You want to separate the washer. Use your steel wall or something else to remove the parts that were sticking to the metal washer. And I'm going to want to put a glove on again because you want to put some grease onto that washer so that it doesn't dry out, crack, and become useless. So let's go do that now. I have a, a drag washer grease. It's called Cal's Universal Drag Grease. You don't need to use it if you don't have it. You can get regular fishing reel grease that we've used on the internals. But I like to use the, the glove to rub that in and rub off any excess before I reinstall. You can put a little bit on the metal washer, it won't hurt it, and then we can reinstall that click ring. All right, set that off to the side. Let's go put the spool back on. Line that up. The adjuster knob goes on next. We're going to tighten that handle up so that we can give this a good test. Now we'll wipe down the reel and it'll be ready to go fishing. So we, we saw that this was a very strong reel even before we started the cleanup and the servicing on it. We found that there's a lot of dried grease in there that, uh, well, it should have impacted its performance. But uh, this one was strong enough to go through that. We saw a very heavy duty ball bearing on this. Let's give it a spin. Well, that just turns beautifully. Let's make sure we put that anti-reverse back on. Go ahead and open that bail for casting and make sure that it closes. And that's it. That's how to take apart service clean and, uh, well, keep this reel running for a long time to come. I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, if you did, again, please like the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And, uh, well, you'll see all kinds of reels that get serviced here. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is you do to keep us safe. I truly appreciate your career choice and dedication to service. To everyone, 
have fun, uh, whether it's a new reel or an old reel, make sure that you keep your reels maintained. Make sure that they're ready to go so that when the, the bite is on, you're not uh, struggling with a reel that uh, is underperforming or maybe not performing at all. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.